Hi there. Today on Typical Books, I'm going to be talking about The Carol Haunt by Darcy Coates. Darcy Coates is a new to me author. She has a lot of books out there and I'd never heard of her. And that makes sense. That tracks. There's a lot of horror fiction out there. A lot of new authors every year. Thousands and thousands of books get put out. So of course some fall through the cracks. So Darcy Coates, The Carol Haunt, has a lovely cover of a levitating girl in a misty staircase, and that caught my eye right away. I like the title. It's very simple. It doesn't, you know, mince words. It is about a haunt. I, so I assumed that it was about a Carol house and is owned by a John Carroll or was built by a John Carroll in the 1900s. I'm getting ahead of myself here. This is published in 2018 by an imprint, Black Owl Books, and I do understand she's self-published a lot of books, which is great. So that could be an imprint of self-publishing. I'm not sure if it was traditionally published or what it seems to be an Amazon release. So probably self-published and lovingly so because she's obviously commissioned some good artwork or done it herself. I don't know. And it is bound wonderfully, just like all of the nicely done Amazon and Kindle style paperbacks are. I'm a fan of that. So the Carol Haunt, the dead are restless here. Dun, dun, dun. And this is what really sold me on picking up this book is the back jacket copy. Remy is a tour guide for Carol House, a notoriously haunted building. When she's asked to host seven guests for a week long stay to research Carol's phenomena, she hopes to finally experience some of the sightings that made the house famous. At first, it's everything they hoped for. When a storm moves in, cutting off their contact with the outside world, and things quickly become twisted. Doors open on their own. Seances go disastrously wrong. Red liquid seeps from behind the wallpaper. You can see why I just, this is just exactly in my haunted house, you know, wish list here. Their spirit medium wanders through the house during the night, seemingly in a trance. Then one of the guests dies under strange circumstances, and Remy is forced to consider the possibility that the ghost of the house's original owner, a twisted serial killer, still walks the halls. By then, it's too late to escape. Okay, you add a twisted serial killer at the end, and I'm absolutely sold. Now, it reads a lot like a grown-up Nancy Drew, and I don't mean that in a negative fashion. I grew up on Nancy Drew. I love Nancy Drew. It has sort of a feeling of V.C. Andrews in that both of those have to do with dark pasts. Nancy Drew mysteries have to do with, you know, people sleuthing out the truth and looking into the history of particular mansions and stuff in a lot of them. So aside from those things, it's just, it's simply written. It has a flesh Kincaid scale of probably grade eight and lower. There's not a lot of jargon. If you didn't know anything about hauntings and ghostly phenomena and researching ghosts and hauntings and seances, then maybe it's jargony to you. But for the seasoned horror author, the seasoned horror reader, the seasoned paranormal investigator via armchair, then it's not too jargon filled. And it's not, you know, it doesn't really, um, uh, speak about the reader ever. So it's a very light read. And I really, that's what I was going in for. I was looking for, I want something ooky, spooky, haunty, dark, fun, light. It's not like thin or anything. It's a, it's a, not a super chunky read, but it is kind of chunky, but it just whips along. I've ripped through this book and enjoyed every minute of it. It's a perfect dark stormy night read. That's where I get into the story of Remy, the tour guide. She's introduced in almost like a Victorian cosplay fashion. And that doesn't persist, but I really enjoy her introduction. And if there were stories with her, like recurring stories featuring her as a main character, I would so be in for that because I really enjoy her character. And the people in the house mark the person who's funding their investigative stay and Piers, who's invited along because he had an interest in, in the house and the paranormal and the story and seemed to enjoy the tour. And Lucille, who is the caregiver for April, who actually owns a house. And she's like a spunky 17-year-old or something. Rich kind of girl that owns this house now. 
And we also have the paranormal researcher Marjorie and her caretaker Bernard. It's a very interesting mix of people. And I'm not going to spoil it. Like, I don't want to spoil the story, but I don't want to spoil these characters because they're fun to meet on their own. And I, I really enjoyed all of their little quirks and the way that this group works and doesn't work together. And then I also like the house itself. And that's what I like about movies like The Woman in Black and some of the haunting movies where they spend a lot of time in the house. And the house, not I wouldn't say it quite becomes a character. Like a lot of Stephen King's houses that he writes about really become a character. Thinking of like the Overlook Hotel. Um, but almost, it almost does. It's a very cool, very cool, twisty, turny little house. Has a creepy attic. And I grew up in a place with a creepy attic, so I can relate to that. I also grew up in a place with a lot of old storm windows and these old windows rattle in the storms and we get a lot of that sort of visual going on in this story. Speaking of the Overlook Hotel and B.C. Andrews, uh, does remind me a lot of B.C. Andrews and I have been gifted an entire collection and I'm very proud of and I'll make a video on it someday, honest. Uh, I've started with the Castile series from B.C. Andrews. Some of the, this was one of the last ones that she had wrote from what I understand and Niedermeyer took over from that point. So I'm going to read the Castile collection and then I'm going to go back and read the Dawn Ganger, Dawn Ganger collection. You can see my lovely little Diablo bookmark, which I will definitely be using more often in subsequent videos. You'll see a little more of this Diablo bookmark when you can tell that I'm actually still in the throes of reading something. An Elevation by Stephen King, which isn't really horror from what I understand. Uh, no bookmark. I'm using the dust jacket as a bookmark, which I think is a bad habit, but I don't know. It doesn't deform it too badly. So yeah, Elevation Stephen King. I don't know if this will make it on the show. Just like I don't know if other than showing the collection of V.C. Andrews, if I'll be talking about V.C. Andrews, maybe in the future. I've got a few requests coming up though that will definitely make it on like Horror Store by Grady Hendrix for one for sure. So that's about that. Thank you very much for watching Typical Books. Subscribe, share. Let me know what you're reading because as much as I like to dig into my bookshelves or pick up something new on my own like Carol Haunt, I am definitely following up on a couple recommendations that have come my way since. So thank you very much and have a okay spooky day.